hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and today i'm trying something new so this is going to be my attempt to do a vlog a reading vlog i have in mind to do a reading of a um, memoir i don't remember if i oh yeah i read um Stephen King's memoir on writing but uh, the idea that I have for this type of vlogs and future vlogs uh, is to be a bit different I want to try to read uh, memoirs from comedians so I really enjoy uh, the work of a comedian and I love stand-up and of course I have my favorites but uh, my plan is to i hope you're hearing me well i don't have my mic on and i'm outside <laughs> my idea is to do reading vlogs about uh, memoirs of comedians and so today or for this vlog i'm planning to to read the memoir of natasha Legero, the how is it called? The world deserves my children. So I have it. Let me show you. The reflection is not letting to see so well. But here is the cover. So she is married to Moshe Kasher. And I love to hear their podcast the honeymoon how how is it the endless honeymoon is on youtube and in other platforms i suppose um and i love to to see them both and i love them both and individually as comedians and so when i think this book came out last year at the end of last year and i was really curious so just right for uh, from the title um and yeah i hope you will accompany me through this reading vlog i'm going to read like to third between 30 to 50 pages and give you an update about my thoughts and what i'm thinking about the book and yeah let's see how this goes and i'm sorry i'm i'm in my pjs already so don't mind that I have dust. I'm all dirty and so, but please forgive me. <laughs> but I didn't want to change clothes. Um, but well, I see you later. So hi guys, hi again. Uh, this is later. I, it's about 8 p.m. This is the same day that I did my introduction. But I started reading the book of Natasha Leggero, so I'm on track, but I don't have uh, an update to do yet. So as if as it is the end of the day, and so this vlog is a bit more interactive, I thought of doing my um, skincare routine so I can show you what I use. Uh, as you can tell by now, it's very noticeable. I I deal with some acne. My acne is hormonal, so it's around the chin and my jaw. Most of the time, sometimes I have here on the cheek, but it's now and then. So, as you know, I'm 31, so I'm still dealing with acne. It's the frustration of my life, but you know, I don't really care about it by now. I'm accustomed to it, so. But okay, so I'm gonna take my glasses off and I'm going to show you what I use, how I clean my face and yeah, let's do it. So I use this uh, bandana, is that how you call it? I don't know if that's how you call it. 
I'm going to put you a bit more there. Okay. So I put this to get my hair out of the way. And then I use Bioderma micellar water or the Bioderma gel mousse sensibio. This is also, let me see, soothing micellar cleansing, cleansing foaming gel, as you can see. So I use uh, one of the or the other or the or the both of them. So to take my makeup off, I usually use my cellar water. So I take a disc, a cotton disc, and I pump three pumps or so. And now I rub all around my face to take the counter or the bronzer, shall we say, and the blush and some concealer that I have on, as you can see. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to see that, but... So I have some mascara as well and I find that with the micellar water um, I don't I don't use waterproof mascara. I hate waterproof mascara. It's terrible to take it off. So I I don't use any oil or anything. But uh, I just use micellar water, and I find it to be very easy to take it off. So, maybe I will speed this up and then I catch you a bit, uh, a minute later, okay? Okay, now that I have my skin cleansed, I like to use a grape water. This is by Caudalie. I find that a thermal water for me, I tried Uriage, Aven, and I find it that this one by Caudalie is the one that makes my skin feel more calm and comfortable because after cleansing sometimes I, I feel my skin a bit dry and pulling you know and I find that with this one with uh, grape water I feel my skin how can I explain it it's more I feel that it gives me some hydration more than just calm calms my skin it gives some hydration and with the other ones I didn't feel that so I have to okay now I have to wait for it to absorb a bit and well we can talk about the introduction it has well in my tablet it has like 10 pages but i didn't finish yet but some details that i can talk to you about is that uh, well, natasha began to talk about that she likes to give parties um, and she likes to, well, to give parties to almost anything. And that when it was um, 
2016 election, um, 2016 to 2017 election in the United States, um, she gave a party with some of their friends, so Harris and Musha, Musha Kasher, in their house because they were confident that Hillary was going to win. And when that didn't happen, she had a thought like, I don't want to have children in this world because, you know. So later she goes to talk about that, well, this is something that she speaks very much about, so it's not like you are only going to know about in the book, so it's not like a spoiler or, any, or anything. Although talking about spoilers in memoirs is a bit, you know. But uh, this is something that she talks about in their podcast. The, the how is it called? The endless honeymoon. And I heard her. Talk, uh, her talk about about this in interviews so you are going to see this information all over and is that that when she was 38 years old she froze some eggs because you know in, in the supposing this is this was her thinking right supposing that some years later I want to have a baby what can I do if I don't froze my eggs now, right? And at the time she didn't have a boyfriend, so she wasn't seeing anyone and she didn't have pro prospects of having like somebody to have a family, but in the casual, in the eventful case, is that, is that a better word? In the case of her being with this being with someone some years later and wanting to have a baby, well, she had her eggs. And if you didn't know, you well will know right now. The daughter that she has with Moshe Kesher is a product of one egg that she had frozen. So isn't that uh, I don't know, fate. So I found that story really cute and it makes me wonder, you know, but I don't have the cash to do that. So, uh, but yeah. Okay, I think that the water has absorbed a bit. So right now I'm going to show you the products that I use. So, first of all, I use this uh, serum by Vichy. This is probi uh, Mineral 89 Probiotic Fractions. So, this is for your, your uh, skin barrier to fortify and to, to help your good bacteria to grow and to stop the growth of bad bacteria and this is something that calms my skin and as you can see I have a bit of redness in my chin, in my nose, throughout my, my, my cheeks and this helps to calm and to uh, make that uh, red, red, redness to turn it a bit down. And right now, um, I don't know if the diagnosis is right, but I think I, because I didn't went to a dermatologist to find out. But I think I have um, dermatitis right here because it has some pumps, pumps, some, I don't know how to call it. 
some eruptions and a redness around here, but he's doing quite better now. But for that, I use just in the spot, I use Eosurin uh, Atopic Control. This is a strong cream for acute phases for dry and irritable skin so this right here so right now I have to wait for the serum to absorb and I think you should uh, go and watch or at least try to I don't know if you're going to like it but I do so perhaps some of you out there will like it too so the podcast is The Endless Honeymoon and they do, uh, they take calls from viewers and they help them with, it's all about um, romantic stories or like the love story or the dating story of people and they help viewers to some situation that they had or even sometimes is um, discussions or complications with the neighbors or other other uh, skit other sketch that they do is to listen to secrets so you can call them and tell them a secret like something that only takes like a minute to tell and they hear the secret and then they comment on it and perhaps they give some pointers or some some opinions that can help the person if it's there's something to help about you probably you won't need help if it's something from the past for instance so they have um it's really funny. I I love watching it. It's and some of the episodes are really short, so if you don't like uh, longer content, well, if you don't like longer content, perhaps you are not watching my channel because my videos are uh, often very long. <laughs> so yeah. Let's see how this is. Okay. So, I put a big chunk like this so my skin can absorb. But this is taking a long time to pass. Okay, and now for my uh, cream, I'm tonight I'm using Vifrin, that's a Vaseline, and I use this. This is pres prescribed by my doctor, and I use this every other night, so to help me. with my acne I forgot to to <clears throat> I forgot to use my to put my eye cream uh, I'm using this one, but I don't know if I like it to be truthful. This is from German de Cappuccini. This is their XL Therapy Pollution Defense. But you know, I don't think the eye cream, if it's not really targeting something, is that important because well if it has 
actives that are really effectful for something that you want to treat, well, then uh, an eye cream is important. But if it's just hydration, I don't. I think that if you use your usual face cream, it's not going to be to be harmful. So hi guys, first update, uh, I said to you that um, I was going to read 30 to 50 pages and give you an update, but I'm already at the middle of the book, so I think I'm, uh, I'm only going to give you two updates, so this one and then the final one. So. Something that Natasha talks about is how is about breastfeeding and how breastfeeding is a subject that many women are judged for um, because some don't want to breastfeed and they give formula to their babies and they are judged because of that. And something that she talks about is that how she didn't have trouble to breastfeed nothing related to that she had lucky she was lucky and the baby latched very easily but she said she she tells us that her experience in breastfeeding wasn't great so she didn't love to do that so she talked to her doctor and um, the doctor said that the she only well the the best period or the necessary period to breastfeed was around three months and so that's what she did she marked three months in her calendar and she, when she uh, arrived to the mark of three months she stopped breastfeeding and well yeah that's a whole conversation that she has with us in the in this book 
Um, then she is going to talk about a bit about uh, her childhood, how um, her parents had her really young. So was her and two brothers, two younger brothers, and she tells us how her father, he was about 23 years old, and she, he left them. They were alone with their mother. And she tells us that after that point, she was in charge of chores like cooking and cleaning and so on. Um, and then she tells when she was a bit older that she worked at some shops and she cut the lawn of some people to make some money. She's going to talk about her younger brother for a period of some, some pages of this book, uh, saying that he was a bit troublesome. He had... Uh, she didn't exactly say if he had some type of condition, like if he was hyperactive or something like that, but she says that he was a bit, a bit of troublesome to deal with because he was really... he couldn't get still. Something like that. Then she jumps again to fast... she, she fast forwards. So in this book we have a bit of jumping back and forth in time. So the chapters aren't linear. Um, and then she's going to talk about when she was 41 and she was already with her husband, Moshe Kesher, and they were trying to get pregnant. Uh, and the doctor at the time told them, uh, because as I've said before, she had frozen eggs. Uh, but the doctor told them, so they don't jump at the eggs right away and so they could try to have naturally but it didn't work and so they tried IVF and it didn't work so then they tried with the eggs the frozen eggs of Natasha uh, and Natasha thought that she had eight eggs so that equivalent that is equivalent to eight babies but of course that's not how it works and some of them were lost in the tests to see for genetic diseases and the ones that survived then one was um, put on her and she miscarried, and then the second try is when, well, her daughter was born. Then she is going to talk about <laughs> another point in you, in women um, prejudices that for them not to have a natural birth, and she was saying to us uh, like that she wasn't very keen on having a natural birth so she would much prefer a c-section eventually she had to have a c-section because she had some trouble well <laughs> she talks very much about how the doctor called her a geriatric uh, pregnancy and she makes fun of it and so, as she was 42, they had to make uh, precautions about her giving birth, so they scheduled a C-section. And so she talks about it and how um, that didn't ruin her vagina and, you know. Then, well, then she jumps back. <laughs> She uh, goes back a few um, a few years, like when she was 23, and she is going to tell us about a man called Christopher, 
that was the man she was dating at the time and he was 42 years old uh, and she says that she he was a kind of a con artist but she was obsessed with him uh, and she dropped college to go with him to Australia and she says that they were in a shack and she called it their love shack and like he will be all pompous about stuff and saying things like he knows it all but he had to go take the bus to go places so and he only had one cool jacket and stuff like that and how he treated her very poorly um, he called her whiny or something I don't remember right now the nickname that he called her but it was it was weird um, and <laughs> It's very strange how she caught get caught on with him and get go 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 went along with his stuff. Very strange. Uh, but eventually he um, left her for another girl that supposedly um, had an inheritance and and she confesses that she was blessed by it because it was a way for her to to get out of that situation because it could have happened that she got pregnant by him and right now she wouldn't be where she is so some things happen and sometimes it's for the better right oh something that she talks about uh, is that around that time or after the, they separate um, she went to a therapist and the therapist asked her to write all the things that she wanted in a partner and she will say something like oh she ha he has to play guitar he has to be like this he has to be like that and the therapist asked her, well, but you don't say anything about the things that he has to do for you or the things or how he should treat you. And so the therapist asked, Nat asked Natasha to uh, think be uh, better about it and rewrite the things that she wanted in a partner. Uh, but Natasha had some trouble doing that because she wasn't understanding the point of the therapist. Uh, but she said that she wanted someone that was sophisticated. Uh, and then she goes to talk about her husband, Moshe, and how she loves him, loves him and thinks he is sophisticated. Uh, and she does something funny that he she does a diagram where she puts on a circle things that Moshe loves to do and things that she loves to do and how they come together in the middle. Something funny that she did there. And although she says that she loves Moshe, she thinks that in a partnership between a man and a woman and particularly when the couple has a child, she thinks that the woman, so the mother, does almost all the work. Uh, but eventually she ends up confessing what she thinks her husband brings to the table. So she cooks, he cooks, I mean, um, he is up on every news around the world so but she more or less is going to say to us that he's a more laid-back kind of parent 
and she's a more, a more full-on parent so <laughs> and she eventually gets to say to us that the differences between them two is like she's normal and he's a maniac <laughs> and then she ends up telling us about an incident in a restaurant with uh, another client in the restaurant and how the reaction that Moshe had it's far away from everything that she could have uh, done because she isn't like him and so she wouldn't behave the way that Moshe or react, I should say the way that Moshe reacted again it's because he is like he is that she loves him and she thinks that um, he ends up to compliment her they have she has a, a whole discussion with her husband um, she, this is another point that she makes about when they were trying to figure out the name they should give to their daughter so Moshe supposedly wanted to, do, to name the daughter with a Jewish name and she was like I don't think so <laughs> and that's part, that part was quite funny something that she also talks about is that something that is also touchy subject is for parents to um, bring a nanny to the table and she asks the question if that bringing a nanny is to discard the responsibility the responsibility as a parent and she says that the answer is perhaps maybe and she is going to tell us about the the fact that they employed a night nurse right after they she gave birth because everyone around them was saying that it was the best thing that they could do so they could sleep and have someone taking care of the baby so they did that and they regret in the first day so the person that they employed only uh, <laughs> was only in their house for one day because they found it strange to have someone in the house sleeping there or being there at night and the way that she would stare at the child so it was kind of strange for them and they didn't like it and so they had to pay for the three weeks that she was supposed to be there but they sent her away and well then i'm i end up stopping in a chapter where where she talks about parenting styles so another touchy subject so what parenting style you should adopt with your child and she says that nowadays you're not supposed to say no to your child and she says she doesn't agree with that so much and that she wants to be an uh, author, author, authorita, authoritative authoritarian how do you say it? authoritarian okay authoritarian type of parent well she wants to be gentle with the child but have rules so and then she comes back so, so she goes backwards again and she talks to us about uh, an experience she had when she was 12 years old <clears throat> uh, and she was in her hometown and she was she had the opportunity to enter in a scene in a movie and she was supposed to play a student in a school a scene with other students she had her lunchbox and everything and but the scene was cut from the movie so <laughs> the opportunity wasn't so fruitful but you know 
she said she was almost there and she was almost there at 12 years old so that was kind of funny because throughout throughout this whole thing um she is also going to talk about how she was trying to become an actress and she talks to she says that she almost had an opportunity to have an agent but then the agent eventually said that she was too short so she couldn't end up to be an actress so some some stuff like that but she was trying to be in the entertainment business and i'm hoping that she talks a bit more about how she became to be a comedian and how that experience was and eventually uh, i'm hoping she uh, is she is going to give us the answer to the title of the book why the world deserves her children so um, I'm hoping to see more of that, but for right now, I'm I'm quite enjoying it. I I think it's very light. It's very easy to go through the pages. Uh, she's getting she's giving us some details, but she's not extensive about it. So you know, he's skipping to the minimum that of the information so here and there is a, a funny part but it's not like i'm laughing out loud you know so uh but i'm quite enjoying it so yeah for now it be is being uh cool to read it and let's see how it goes from here on out so see you later <laughs> Hello again. This is this is going to be my final update. I had to say that I kind of enjoyed more the second part of the book than the first one. In the next chapters uh, that I read after the first update, she will talk about gender fluidity like how that is a topic nowadays and um, how can she explain that to her daughter and uh, the things th that she has to explain to her like why boys have penises and girls have vaginas and topics like about fem feminism or what is a feminist and how 
old stereotypes of gender roles are now to be uh, taken down. What is she going to teach her daughter? In all the possibilities that nowadays exist and all the ideologies, not so, I we can't say they are new ideologies, but with the movements that have been happening, those ideologists are more preeminent, and she is worried like, what is she going to teach her daughter? And she even talks about that in ancient times, the norm was to be a matriarchy. There came a point in history where men with their upper, upper body strength took over. She concludes that the Me Too movement was maybe the best thing that happened. So she goes on to talk about um, her relationship with her husband and how she converted to Judaism and because her husband is a Jew uh, and it wasn't something that Moshe asked her to do it was something that she volunteered uh, to do because she has some criticisms about uh, Christianity, like she she tells us that when she was in school, she was in a, a nun school, I think, um, that she asked if Adam and Eve had sex and she was put out of the, um, the room, you know, out of the um, classroom. And she, she wasn't given an answer. And she thinks that in Judaism, everyone can ask questions that is allowed and that is welcomed. So she thinks in that particular point, Judaism is superior to Christianity. So that was something plus that make, made her convert. Now she says that, well, she doesn't celebrate Christmas anymore, right? They celebrate Hanukkah and she has to confess that she, in, in some kind of way she misses Christmas because it was so ingrained in her that that festivity kind of make roots. And then she talks about something that her daughter tells them that was kind of cute. Uh, she goes on to tell that she didn't watch Disney movies and that her idols weren't a princess or anything like that. Her idol was Janet Jackson. Um, and an ex-boyfriend of her took her to Disneyland to have fun and she hated it. <laughs> so she's um, nothing... Well, she has... She doesn't want to have nothing to do with Disneyland or Disney or anything like that. But more in front, we are going to see that she... Well, she's, go she's going to have to give in. Uh, then she she says that she's trying to manage the time and the contact that her daughter has with technology. And she even confesses that sometimes she projects in her, doctor, uh, her daughter what she wanted to... that her childhood would have been. So... Something that she tells is um, something that she does together with her daughter that is like a private joke in a way uh, is that they hate ads like television ads and they scream to the telly that they hate ads and they 
don't want anything to do with publicity and she even turns to Natasha and tells we hate commercials don't we mom and she acknowledges and so on and so forth and one day uh, Natasha was getting out of the house and her daughter asked her where where was she going and she said oh I'm going to film a commercial and <laughs> the daughter was like but don't we hate commercials and she was like oops <laughs> so she was caught and you know it's is that type of stuff that sometimes when you have kids i don't have kids right so i i'm no one to be saying anything about it but sometimes things like like that happen and you don't know how to answer right it's well it's the incong in incongruencies that inevitably will happen in life and kids caught them or, or catch them i mean um and eventually as i was saying before she took her daughter to disneyland so i don't think uh, that she loves it now but it was more for her daughter than anything else so you know then she tells something that the dentist her dentist uh tell told her that one kid doesn't form a family so he was incentivating her to have more but she kind of contests that that she is perfectly happy with just one child one kid and she even goes to to say that in china between 1980 and 2015 there was a law of one child because of the huge um, numbers of population in china uh, and she does the reasoning that uh, in old days um, according to the number of children we could figure out that um, how much the man was horny like something like that and that in old days the the child or the children worked so they worked for their parents and nowadays the parents work for the child right we do everything for them basically uh, then she does um, a thought that is if you only have one child you have less possibilities of that child to turn out cool and if you have more than one child you enlarge the possibility of at least one of them being cool but you know that's and she goes to say how but because this is her predicament like how you don't turn your only child entitled and she's in that situation right now how well well she wants to raise her, her daughter well in the way that she won't turn out entitled so you know then the book ends with a conversation it's like it's literally a transcript of a conversation between her and her husband um i'm not going to dwell in the subjects that they go through but it's about themselves and um being parents and what he does that she doesn't do and the contrary some something like that and um i quite enjoyed it that part was really fun and then at the end of the book there's an epilogue where she talks about 
um, a dog that she had even before she was with Moshe Kesher, so before her, da her daughter and everything that accompanied her throughout her life. Uh, and how having a dog, you have a more routine life. And on the contrary, having a child, it's everything happening. Well, um, many things happen in different ways every day. Uh, so it's not so routine, let's say. And she tells that she began to write this book when her child was a baby and how being a mother changed her and how, well, having a child, she realized that she loves her child more than she loves herself. And yeah, it's like... A, I, I, I think it was a great way to end up the book and overall I enjoyed I but I have to say that I was expecting something else I was expecting a more critical and acidic opinionated and more um, directed to our society like a more critical book of our society and what is happening nowadays and how with the fanatism and the extremist ideologies that are parading the the world we have to have some type of neutrality and bring up children in that ideology of being liberal and caring for each other and caring for the other person and those type of ideas I I was thinking that she was leaning more towards that type of book and that type of narrative but what I found was it it was more a uh, true and pure memoir where she sprinkled with peculiarities and details about being a mother and how the fact that she had a kid changed her perspective upon some things in life. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm not saying that I was disappointed because I really enjoyed the book but it, it this this was the case of um, misplaced expectations because the title of the book the world deserves my children directed me to a type of expectation of what the book was going to do to be and then it turned out to be a memoir and is nothing wrong with it so it's quite fun I have to say it's not like tearing, laughing book, but it's a very fun book. It has, um, if you don't have kids like me, it's a way for you to think about in very, ter very different facts that you will have to confront when you become a father or a mother. In this case, more a mother than anything else, uh, because this is her perspective as a woman and as a mother. So I can identify more with her in that term, because although I don't have any children, I think about having children and what that will entail. And if I, well, if I want to breastfeed, how will I breastfeed? Will I breastfeed in public? Like those type of thoughts um, and also how you <laughs> it's really important to have co coherence uh, in your behaviors when you have a kid 
and how that is very difficult because being being coherent every day and everything you say matching with everything you do well that's something that i suppose few humans can do so yeah i really enjoyed it and i'm going to end the vlog here because it's really long i had long divagations and i hope i don't think i spoiled anything because there's nothing like to have the experience of reading the book i let many things out many situations that she also tells and of course the conversation with the husband i didn't talk so much about it so you have many things to pick up from this book and you will pass a good time it's very fluid very rapid to read uh, it's entertaining if you are between readings i think this is a wonderful book to pick up so yeah go for it and if you didn't know them then now you do go check out their podcast go check out their stand-up they have a, um, a show together where they bring people to the stage and couples mostly and they talk about their issues or some desires that they have and it's really cool it's really interesting and they're both together ha are something so please go check them out and i see you well i have to say goodbye right properly so Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I see you on the next one. I hope you have enjoyed it. This is my first vlog, so I see you on the next one. Bye!